Good evening. This is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital. It's the evening of February 28th, 2010, and I want to talk you through a conceptual framework for short-term trading that incorporates statistics of the normal gap, or the gap stat, and intraday range, or the move from the high to the low. I want to provide you a uh, chart framework of how you might organize your thinking and then I want to give you an example of what that trade might look like on a regular basis. The first thing I want to do is I want to differentiate between the performance of a stock or exchange traded fund between its overnight gap performance and what it does during the day when the market is open. So the first thing we're taking a look at is the gap. And I look at two time periods, the last 200 days to define normal, and then I look at the last 30 days to see what it does on the follow through after it gaps. Now I take the position that there are four things that can happen to, in this case, Alcoa. After, if it closed at this black arrow, it can either go up or down at the open. So I'm just comparing the close yesterday with the open today. Now, if it goes up, if it gaps up, it can either uh, finish the day higher than the open, so close would be higher than the open, or it can gap up and then fail lower than the, than the gap opening. Uh, the follow-through in that case would be less. But if it gaps down, it can reverse intraday and close higher than it opened, or it can continue to fail and follow through lower than it opened. So those are the four things. If it opens exactly where it closes, then I treat that as a gap up, but of zero value. And if it closes exactly where it opened, then I treat that for statistical purposes as a higher follow through, but a value of zero. So we reduce this to four categories. So gap up and follow through, gap up and then fail down, gap down and reverse, or gap down and fail. So let's take a look at what Alcoa has done, symbol AA, over the last 200 days. Uh, when I've measured the uh, percent difference between the close and the open over the last 200 days, what we found is a uh, largest favorable gap, if you're long, of 5.7%, and the worst adverse gap, if you were long, uh, minus 7.62%. The average gap was 0.38, but the most important statistic in there rather than the average, is the standard deviation of 1.83. Now to find a range of normal, we're going to define that as the average plus or minus one standard deviation. So when you do the math, what you find is that Alcoa uh, could gap as high up as 2.21% or as low as negative 1.44% and still be within the range of normal as defined by its behavior in the last 200 days. That's a significant range of, of overnight vari, uh, variation in volatility. So if I'm looking at holding Alcoa overnight, I'm really concerned about a multiple of the standard deviation in order to measure and manage my overnight risk. And you'll see that's considerably different than uh, how close you can manage risk during the day when the market is open. Now, in order to find the follow-through performance, I'm interested in the last 30 days for the shorter-term trend. Now, what we've seen over the last 30 days, 60% of the time, Alcoa has gapped up, and then 16% of the time, it has followed through higher with an average return on those days of 2.02%. And then 43% of the time, it has gapped up and then failed, and the failures have, on average, been 1.64% to the downside from the open. Now if you multiply the frequency times the average return you get an expectancy and that's what these two numbers. So the upside move of gap up and follow through comes in at 0.34 percent. The gap up and then fail comes in at a value of negative 0.66 percent. So you can see there's a decided advantage to framing a trade that gaps up and then fails. Now 40 percent of the time Alcoa has failed has gapped lower than yesterday's close. And then 10% of the time, it has reversed intraday and moved up on average 1.54%. And 
and then 30% of the time it is gapped, uh, it is follow through lower than the gap down uh, for an average of minus 2.21%. So when you do the expectancy once more, you can see that in fact the gap down and fail uh, is uh, over four times as valuable in terms of expectancy than the gap down and reverse. And so what you see in both cases over the last 30 days, regardless of the direction of Alcoa, the bigger move has been uh, as a subsequent failure. In the case of the gap up and fail, uh, it's a reversal. In the gap down and fail, uh, it's a runaway, runaway freight train going south. Now I've taken also a look at the, at the absolute theoretical best possible move of the last 200 days. We call that the intraday move. And I'm interested in this number here, the average best intraday move, which in Alcoa measured from high to low on a percentage basis is about 4.15%. The biggest intraday move it's ever made is 11.34% in the last 200 days. The smallest move was 1.2%. Standard deviation, 1.83%. And now what that establishes is a range of normal intraday moves between the high and the low of between 6.13% and 2.18%. That's a simple normal move, although we've seen moves almost three times as large as the average uh, on its uh, most significant day. And those are absolute values. So we don't know where in the, uh, during the day that occurred. Now, that's significant because Alcoa trades at, at about $13 right now. And a 4% move on Alcoa is about 52 cents. Now, if you can manage a $0.10 cent intraday stop in Alcoa at possible turning points, then what you have on a normal day is the potential for a perfect 5R trade. And so if you can only get half of that, uh, you're able to frame a normal 2R trade intraday with Alcoa based on your ability to identify and frame potential turning points. This is what I mean by knowing your markets and being prepared for the normal move uh, so that you can prosper. Uh, in my next video, I'm going to give an example in Alcoa of how to frame this trade a little further. Thanks for your attention.